Hello everyone and welcome to another Mods World video. I'm your host Maxwell. Today we're going to be on PC where I'll be playing The Witcher 3 which despite my awkward combat skills is easily one of my favourite games. But even our favourite games can be made better with mods. And with that in mind, I'll be taking a look at my top 5 mods for The Witcher 3. So before I say favourite so many times I stop thinking it's a real word, let's just dive on in. First up is the base mod that I'm going to be using to improve the game. There's actually quite a few options that you could take for full overhauls, but I went for enemy scaling and gameplay overhaul, otherwise known as ESGO. Essentially, ESGO is going to be adding in a massive set of options to the mods menu. These settings are going to allow you to tweak a ridiculous amount, such as how enemies scale alongside you, which in itself has several menus with different scaling options. We also get a bestiary fix, which allows you to choose if your allies' kills count towards your bestiary progress. Weapons and armor durability settings, allowing you to have fully durable equipment. You can also toggle if items level alongside you, switch level requirements on and off, change gold rewards, experience earned is configurable with this mod. You can change how many perk points you get from leveling up, tweak all of your ability outputs, edit movement and combat speed, enemy aggression towards you, as well as damage multipliers. As if this wasn't enough, there are still more tricks up this mod sleeve. The usually irritating auto lock on enemies can be changed to suit the gravity you want it to be at. Honestly, this mod's going to be covering several of the top quality of life edits right out of the gate. But what's truly insane is how we get all of these mods, but in a far more configurable manner. You are never locked down to any way of play. This is allowing you to truly create the settings that you want in your game. This is all incredibly useful, and if you're only going to be running a light order, then this is a mod that you should highly consider. To install ESGO, you can use the Nexus Mod Manager or Vortex with relative ease. Just be sure to take the bin folder from Mod ESGO and move it to the games directory. The same would go for manual installation, which I personally found easier. If you're running any other mods, there's a fair chance that you're also gonna have to run the script merger or play around with priorities to get things working right. Next up is a mod called Increase Creature Loot. I think this mod is likely going to be in most people's favourites list, and with good reason. Increased Creature Loot is doing exactly what the mod says it's going to do. Spawns in Witcher can have some of the most disappointing loot tables. You'll maybe get one or two items that, generally speaking, are low quality and other than some crafting here and there, maybe a little bit of coin if you sell them, the rewards just don't feel very rewarding. This is where Increased Creature Loot steps in. What is really great about this mod is just how versatile it is. Tiny improvements to quite frankly, broken amounts of loot. This mod is gonna let you choose how you think the creature loot should look. There are actually five settings that you could choose. Purist, which is for those of you who think the amount of loot is fine, but every creature should have at least one thing drop every single time. Then there's ICL, which will increase the loot percentages. ICL also changes what's available in the loot to be slightly more realistic, with only a small chance of jewellery being found on monsters or creatures. There is also an increased chance of more loot from NPCs. These changes are reflected the entire way down the line, with each setting increasing the extra loot available. ICL Plus would have you receiving an extra loot spot from all spawns. ICL Max, which I'm literally using because it has my name in it, is going to add yet another possible item to everything ICL Plus did. And finally, there's ICL Ultimate, which you guessed it, is going to push things out even further. The author says if a spawn would generally drop between one and three items, well, that same spawn with ultimate is gonna give you three to five items. And where ICL file would add one extra drop for NPCs, ultimate is gonna give you a chance at an extra four items. This is important though. Too much loot will not feel that rewarding in the long haul. Consistently having to find vendors who hopefully have some coin left over, although Technically, I guess you could use ESGO to remove the over encumbered effect. I will say I'm also using Trademan, so I can actually just edit the amount of coin that vendors have, as well as how long it takes them to refresh. ICO Plus has got to be my favorite version of this mod, just when it comes to balance, while still being rewarding. But the file that you choose is completely up to you. To install this mod, I found Vortex to be the easiest way, with a simple pop-up menu to select which version you want. I generally prefer manual installation, but in this instance, it is easier with your mod manager. 
If you do want to manually install the mod though, it isn't exactly problematic. Simply extract the file and choose the mod folder which corresponds to the version that you want to use. Then put that file into your mods folder in the game directory and job done. For my third mod, I'm going with auto apply oils. In the vanilla game, oils could make the difference in a really difficult fight. Did I use them even though I knew this? No. It was too much effort and in games I'm the kind of lazy my cats would be proud of. With auto apply oils, I am now finally able to reasonably utilize an interesting and effective game mechanic. This mod runs exactly as you'd want it to as well. As soon as you enter combat, the mod detects this and what you're fighting against. It then searches your inventory for an effective oil and puts it on your weapon. No menu and no breaking of combat, but with all of the effectiveness of using these oils. The mod also feels balanced too, as first you need to have the oils to use, which is where it pairs so well with increased creature loot. Because, let's face it, you're going to need the ingredients and you're probably going to need the money too. You're going to run down these resources fairly quickly with this mod. If you don't have the oils to use, you're just going to be told about it in the bottom left corner. So that might get annoying if you're not really going to be using oils all that much. However, if this is something that annoys you, auto apply oils comes with its own mod menu, albeit a very simple one. This menu is going to let you enable or disable the mod. Pretty basic, right? Either way, I think it's great and it's easy to get working as well. For the most simple installation method, you could use a mod manager. But if you are going to do it manually, then just extract the contents to your Witcher 3 mods folder in the game directory. Next up, I'm going to talk about better trophies. This mod is going to, in the author's words, replace the boring vanilla trophy bonuses. And it definitely does this. In the base game, the trophies handed out for killing certain enemies felt fine, but that's about the best I could say about it. Maybe I'm too used to the offerings, but with better trophies, the bonuses feel like they can play more into the builds than ever before. These bonuses look to increase an aspect of your combat. For example, in the base game, the Arrakis Trophy grants the user a 5% chance to discover extra herbs when looting. Sure, this has a use case, but honestly, if this is what you're building for, then more plausible gathering of alchemy ingredients would be a far better option and allow you to run better trophies happily. Alternatively, you could go and get the new and improved Lash and Trophy, and have the same effect as the original Arrakis Trophy, but with a 50% bonus instead. And on top of that, you do an extra 5% of bonus damage to relics. Right, I've gotten really hung up on a singular thing then. These bonuses include things like slashing resistance, piercing resistance, extra damage to certain enemy types, attack power increased, sign intensity, adrenaline, all manner of things are available here. I'm not going to go the entire way through the list here, but if you wish to see them then check the description for a link to the mod. But a few examples would be, the Griffin Trophy will give you a 4% increase in your attack power, your sign intensity, your adrenaline, as well as a 5% damage increase to all hybrids. The Art Griffin is going to give you these, but with 6% instead, although it still retains the 5% damage to hybrids. The Forkatile Trophy will give you a 10% piercing resistance, as well as 5% increased damage to Draconids. I'm going to be somewhat a fan of any mod that lets you play into build styles. Right now, for example, I'm using signs as the main part of combat. I know how inventive of me. No one has ever thought to use these before. Anyway, mods like this are helping to ensure I hit the maximum damage potential without completely breaking my game and turning Geralt into a god. To download this mod, you can manually install it and place the Mod Better Trophies folder into the Mods folder in the game directory. Then be sure to play around with your priorities and run the script merger to make sure everything runs correctly. Now it's time for my final choice. And seeing as I haven't been doing this in any particular order, I've somewhat killed that excitement, but that doesn't mean that this mod won't completely transform your game. I've gone with Critical Slow Motion Combat Mod, and I freaking love this mod. When fighting, should I find myself hitting for critical damage? Then you guessed it, that's going to occur in slow motion. This is roughly a second worth of this for you to play with and honestly it feels good, looks great and I have no complaints. Critical slow motion has on many occasions pulled me out of a jam a little too. As an unintended consequence of this mod is the new time frame is going to allow you to properly scout your environment. With the inbuilt dodging system as well as the cameras, 
The entire setup feels great, and moving away from an advancing or lunging enemy at the final second feels so much better. It certainly pairs really well with the finishers, making them feel far more cinematic. You can edit this mod settings too, but that is largely going to take place inside the mod's files, and isn't really something I've bothered playing with. But the settings you could potentially change are the odds of this proccing, the length it will be in slow motion for, how slow that motion's going to be, and far far more. Now I personally don't advise playing around with this as the basic setup is so well balanced. I also think that too much slow motion will likely not look all that great and just make the gameplay really slow. I personally like the 1 in 5-ish feel that I currently get. I really don't have much else to say about this mod that hasn't already been said on it so I'm going to get down to the simple stuff. To install the mod, download it and extract the contents into your mods folder in the game directory and you guessed it. Like always, Run the script merger. I'm just going to take a moment to talk about a few mods that went without mention. First up we've got slot slot slots which is going to allow you to add more skills and mutagens to your build. There's also the accessory slot mod which will let you add things like hoods and other accessory style clothing to your person without using up any armor slots. There's the auto loot items which you know what that does. There's preparations or friendly meditations to change how the meditation system works to be more involved than just skipping time. You could use complete animations so whenever you eat, drink, or really do anything, there's an animation to play for your action. There's the Phoenix Lighting Mod or Super Turbo Lighting Mod for more realistic lighting. You could also use realistic weather and your favourite reshades to help there. I happen to use photorealistic, but the choice is yours. There are mods like Fast Travel From Anywhere to remove some of the annoying travelling stresses. Magic Spells and Random Encounters are two of the biggest game feeling changes you could make. There's sword FX for much prettier FX, especially for things like the oils which run attached to your weapons. You could use Thoughtful Roach to have the horse be slightly more useful. And if you feel like you want to play a slightly different style, you could even run things like Firearms and Ard Bombs. Honestly, Witcher 3 is a massively diverse game when it comes to modding. You can set everything up exactly as you want it. Well, as long as you can run the script merger effectively, which before you do anything, I highly advise you look up a tutorial on. But on that, I'm going to call it. As things stand, my next PC video will be in a month and cover the rather fantastic Red Dead Redemption 2. That is, unless enough people convince me to try another game, so get commenting with which games you want to see played next. In two weeks I will be covering the best Skyrim mods of the month, so if that's something you're interested in, then do be sure to subscribe. Subscribers and members of my Discord server, link in the description, have a say on what games I play and mod next, so be sure to come and join us so your favourite games can be covered. Other than that, I just want to thank everyone for watching and their continued support as I pivot the channel. You are all the best. Thank you, and I hope to see you in the next one.